Hello, my name is Michael and I work in the Quality Improvement Division on Measurement for Improvement. In this video I'd like to talk to you about Run Charts, a tool commonly used in quality improvement. So let's start with a question. What exactly is a Run Chart? Well, the simple answer is a Run Chart is a chart that displays data over time. So what does a Run Chart actually look like? Well, the first thing you'll notice is that the data is displayed in time order. In this example, the data is represented by the blue line, and on the x-axis we're plotting each month that we've collected, collected data. In this example, uh, we're looking at the number of pressure ulcers the service has identified in each month over a 14-month period. And so you can see how time is progressing on the x-axis. On the y-axis we would display the values recorded using a suitable scale and remembering to label it appropriately. So we've touched on the first two things, the axes and the data. The third thing that makes up a run chart is the centre line. And on a run chart the centre line is the median. It's not necessary to have a detailed mathematical description of the median, so we'll simply remember that the value that divides your data in two is the median, so that half the data points are above and half the data points are below. Together, these three elements are the fundamental elements of a run chart, and we have a short guidance document on our website called The Anatomy of a Run Chart, which you might also find useful. So when you think of the definition of a run chart, keep these three things in mind. The next question we should ask ourselves is why use a run chart? Most of you are probably already familiar with the model for improvement which the Institute for Healthcare Improvement in Boston use as a framework to guide improvement efforts. This model includes three questions, one of which is how will we know that a change has resulted in an improvement? And because change happens over time, we would use a run chart to look at our data over time. And there are several advantages to run charts. They're easy to construct, they're easy to interpret. There's no knowledge of statistics required, and they can be used from the beginning of a project. And we would often advise people, once you have data, it's good to start plotting it straight away. So now let's talk about how we would interpret a run chart. To do this, we have four rules that we use. The first rule is rule one and is also known as the shift rule. In this rule, we're looking for instances where six or more consecutive data points are all above or below the center line. If we look at our example run chart from earlier, we can see that there are six points in a row from the second to the seventh data points all above the center line. This represents a shift. There's also a second shift further on in the data, but this time the data points are below the center line. Rule two is the trend. For this rule, we're looking for five or more consecutive data points all going up or down. Again, using the, the example run chart um, from earlier, you can see that there is a trend in this data towards the end of the data set, where there are five points in a row continually going up. In rule three, we are looking for too many or too few runs. So for this rule, we need to know how many runs are in the data displayed on our run chart. Again, we use the example of the run chart we had earlier to look at how many runs there are. But first we need to understand what a run is. A run is one or more data points on the same side of the centre line. So if we look at our data, we have one run at the start, which is a single data point, followed by a run of six data points, followed by another run of six data points, and finally a fourth run of a single data point. 
So to know if this is too many or too few, we need to consult a reference table. And we can see for a run chart with 14 data points, there should be between 4 and 12 runs. As our example had 4 runs, this rule has not been broken in this case. Rule 4 refers to an astronomical data point. This is where a single data point is unusually high or low compared to the rest of the data in the chart. I've used a slightly different graph here to illustrate this point, and you can see that the third data point is noticeably higher than the rest of the data. So if you look at a run chart and you apply these four rules, what does it mean if you find that one of the rules has been broken? The term we would use is a signal. A broken rule is a signal that the pattern in the data is unlikely to have occurred by chance. And a signal, when detected, may represent an improvement in the quality of care, for example following implementation of a change, but it could also be something else. So remember to include the subject matter experts when interpreting run charts. To finish then, we have some references. The table that we used in Rule 3 comes from this paper by Perla et al, which is freely available online. Our Measurement for Improvement website also has a number of resources you might find useful, like the one I mentioned earlier, the anatomy of a run chart. It's always good to remember that measurement is just one of the six drivers in the HSE framework for improving quality, which can be accessed here. We've also included the link to the Pressure Ulcer to Zero Collaborative website as the participating teams have demonstrated how run charts can be used effectively in quality improvement. And finally, the Healthcare Data Guide is a comprehensive text that covers the use of run charts and other types of charts in healthcare improvement. For more information on QID measurement for improvement and our resources, please see our webpage or follow us on Twitter at QI Measurement. Thanks for listening.